Hello. Today you will be learning about rotations of points on a coordinate plane. If it's a 180 degree rotation, keep X and Y where they are. Take their opposites. If it's a 90 degree rotation, you trade places with the X and Y, and you take the opposite of one of them, depending on what quadrant they're on. All right, so today we are learning about rotations. There's two types of rotations. You can do a clockwise rotation, basically spin it like a clock would go. And then you can also do counterclockwise rotations, which go the other way. Now we're going to be taking shapes, putting them on a coordinate plane, and then spinning them. I've got this arrow. I've got a bunch of pictures of an arrow, and currently it's in the second quadrant. Well, this first one, I'm going to do a 90 degree clockwise rotation. And there we go. Notice how it was pointing up, and now it's pointing right. Here's 180 degrees clockwise. It was in quadrant two, now it's in quadrant four. It was pointing up, now it's pointing down. That's 180. 270 clockwise, 270 degrees. Basically, it's uh, pointing up, then it was pointing to the left. For a 360 degree clockwise spin, you just, it's back where it was originally. So once again, now we're gonna do some counterclockwise spins. We've got the arrow down here to the, on the bottom left. It's as if you put your pointer finger right on the origin and you're spinning. So 90 degrees counterclockwise is gonna be down there. It was pointing up, now it's pointing sideways. For 180 degrees, it was up and then down. 270, you're just spinning around, almost a full circle, but not, not quite. And then for 360 counterclockwise, it's back where it was in the beginning. If you notice, a 90 degree clockwise is the exact same thing as a 270 counterclockwise. And 270 clockwise is the same thing as 90 counterclockwise. Also, 180 degrees, doesn't matter clockwise or counterclockwise, you're going to end up in the same spot. Same thing as 360 degrees. You're going to end up in the same spot. Doesn't matter which way you spin it. So that's what they look like. Now what we're going to need to do is talk about what happens with uh, ordered pairs, x, y values, when you do these rotations. If you rotate 90 degrees, we've got this point, point P. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. We're going to write the new coordinates. Some really cool things happen. So the original location was 4, common, negative 2. I'm going to do a counterclockwise spin. And there we go. So now, what is its new location? Let's see, that'd be right 2 and then up 4. So 2, 4. The new location is at 2, 4. Some really cool things you need to notice are happening here. When the coordinates change in a 90 degree rotation, look at how the x and y values trade places. The negative 2 went over as a 2. The 4 went over as a 4. Now you have to be careful whether or not it's positive or negative. When you did the spin here on this one, it ended up in quadrant one, so therefore everything's positive in quadrant one. For 90 degree rotations, the x and y coordinates trade places. The quadrant that the new point is in will tell you if the values are positive or negative. So now we're gonna try 180 degrees rotation and it's going to be counterclockwise. Really doesn't matter if it's counterclockwise or clockwise, you're going to end up in the same spot like we talked about a couple frames ago. So here's the original location, 4, negative 2 again. We're going to do a 180 degree rotation. 
So it's in a coordinate that's diagonal from where it was. It was in quadrant 4, now it's in quadrant 2. The new location is going to be left 4, up 2. And if you notice, left 4, up 2, we kept the x's and y's where they are. We kept them where they are, but we took the opposite of each of them. So the 4 became negative 4, negative 2 became positive 2. For 180 degree rotations, the new image's coordinates are the exact opposite of the original coordinates. The x and y stay where they are, and you just take their opposites for each of them. Okay, we're going to do a 90 degree clockwise. So the original location is at 4, negative 2. Now, according to what we've been talking about, the 4 and the 2 should trade places. So it should become some kind of 2, some kind of 4. With this, you know, the x is going to be a 2, the y is going to be a 4. And if we're doing a 90 degree rotation, it's going to end up in quadrant 3. So that means they both should be negative. So here's our rotation. 90 degrees clockwise. So there's our new point P, the image of P. So that means left 2 and down 4. So I'm doing left 2 down 4. Hey, we've got, they traded places, and they're both negative now because it's in quadrant 3. For 90 degree rotations, the x and y coordinates trade places. The quadrant that the new point is in will tell you if the values are positive or negative. It went to quadrant 3 where everything's negative, both x and y. Now we're going to do some, an entire shape. We're going to rotate this entire triangle uh, 180 degrees clockwise. So what quadrant should it be in? It's currently in quadrant 2. If you do 180 degrees, it's going to be in the diagonal quadrant. It should end up in quadrant 4. So here are the original points, and then we're going to rotate 180. So here we go. So the purple triangle is our new image. Notice how A was the furthest left point, and now it's the furthest right point. So we're going to name the new images. Well, let's see, that would be right, then down. So that's right, two, four, six. Right six and down five. So right six, down five for point A, the image of point A. Now if you look carefully, the X's and Y's stayed in the same place, and you just took their opposites. You took the opposite of each x value and the opposite of each y value. 180 degrees are pretty easy. You just keep them where they are, take their opposites. For 180 degree rotations, the new images coordinates are the exact opposite of the originals. We have the 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. So we've got the original points, and we're going to do a 90 degree counterclockwise it's currently in quadrant 2. If you're doing counterclockwise, it should end up in quadrant 3. So we're going to do the spin, the rotation, and there it is. So our new points are going to be here. And we can uh, go ahead and write them down. Once again, notice how the coordinates changed. The y became an x, the x became a y. The 5 was the second term, now it's the first term. Same thing with the 4 and the 1. They slid over, and then the x's turned into the y's. Now, since it ended up in quadrant 3, everything is negative in quadrant 3. That's why we have the negative signs in front of all of the coordinates. For 90-degree rotations, the x and y coordinates trade places, and the quadrant that the new point is in will tell you if it's positive or negative. So we're going to do a 90 degree clockwise. We've got the original points. We do clockwise. We name our new points, image of A, image of B, image of C. 
So according to this, it's in quadrant one, so that means all of our values will be positive. Six, five should, negative six, five should turn into five, six. Negative two, four should change into four, two. And then point C, should, the new image should be one comma four because they're trading places, the X and Y. Five, six, four, two, one, four, there we go. So they changed, they switched places, and then we made them both positive because they were in quadrant one. 90 degree rotations, X and Y trade places. The quadrant that the new image point is in tells you if, that they're both positive in this case. So for the summary, which type of rotation involves switching X and Y, trading places? That's gonna be the 90 degrees. Whether or not it's positive or negative depends on the quadrant that it ends up in. What type of rotation involves keeping X and Y where they are but taking their opposites? That's the 180 degree rotation. Okay, so if you are rotating 180 degrees, the X and Y stay where they are, but you take their opposites. For 90 degree rotations, trade places with the X and Y and figure out the new quadrant and then make your positives negatives based on that. That's it. Now go practice it and do your homework and pay attention and listen to your teacher and bring him a cup of coffee.